Hi everyone, Lee Pros here from fstoplounge.com. Today I wanted to talk about filters, but before I do that, I just want to invite you to come along to the 2015 Fiji workshop that we're holding in uh, Fiji, just off the coast on Manor Island. And on this island, we'll hold a three-day workshop. We're inviting some of the world's best photographers and most followed photographers that you'll see in different countries around the world. So I invite you to check it out. Um, join Benjamin Vong Wong, Eli Locati, Colby Brown, Jane Barina Patel, Michael Fletcher, Tony Hewitt and Nick Rains, myself and a few others on the island to learn photography and videography. It's going to be a once in a lifetime experience and I hope to see you there. Now let's get back to those filters. Something I use a lot in my photography is filters. Uh, it saves a lot in um, landscape photography. You can bring back the sky and things like that using an array of filters like these ones here. The, the number one filter that you'll probably see on most lenses though is the UV filter. And these filters are pretty durable. Um, I use the Hoyer brand myself. I find them very good and I also use Lee filters. But this Hoyer filter, um, it's a HMC filter. And what that means, it's slightly thinner than a lot of the other cheaper filters out there. The advantage of that is when you're using a wide angled lens, you're not gonna see the sort of the vignette on the outside of the, uh, the photo, I suppose, which would be the, the outside rim of the filter. It keeps the profile nice and small, meaning that you're not gonna get that exposure. Um, so with the UV filter, it's best to keep it on the whole time. Uh, it's gonna protect your lens and also stop a little bit of um, uh, distance haze, I suppose. Uh, it's not a lot of haze that it will cut out, but it will cut out a little bit, or so they say. Um, one thing I like about the Hoya filters as well in the, in the Pro 1 series is their scratch resistance. So I can scratch that with a piece of metal and that hasn't left a mark. They're also um, water resistant, so when water sort of falls on there, it's gonna bead off. It's not gonna stay on there for a long period of time. Um, and when you're using a lens cloth, a big thing I like is when you're using uh, like at the ocean and there's ocean spray, you can simply just do that and it's not going to smear the, um, the salt spray around the filter. Um, a good lens cloth will pick it up and the filter will resist it. So that's the filters I use. That's a 58mm one. Um, I typically use a 77 uh, filter size for all my lenses. Um, if I don't have a 77mm filter, um, or lens, it would be like 72, I'll use a step up, which goes from 72 to 77. So as you can see, uh, that's the UV filter. Next one along the line is, when you're not using the UV, you'd use this one. And I use this for landscape photography. It's a circular polarizing filter. Um, all it is, it means it's got two rings, you can see here, uh, the bottom ring and the top ring. This one obviously is screwed onto the camera and then you would rotate the, the top ring. And what that's gonna do is cut out any reflection on the ocean, as well as glass if you're in the city or around buildings. You can adjust uh, how much reflection you wanna cut out by using the circular polarizer, by turning this and cutting the polar, well, and doing the polarization. Um, cool thing is, to your landscape, the effect is gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna actually enhance your blues and your, your greens a little bit. And um, for landscape photography, it's gonna bring back the those clouds. So it's going to really make those clouds pop against like the blue sky that you'll be seeing. So definitely I'd recommend um, this one, uh, the Hoya. This one here is the Hoya HD circular polarizing filter. It's made in Japan and I'll put a link um, to the product in the description below. Okay, the other thing that landscape photographers love is doing long exposures and to do that in bright situations uh, it's kind of difficult. So what photographers tend to do is they tend to cut out the light coming into the lens. And the way to do that is through a neutral density filter. And this neutral density filter, or a lot of them will vary. They'll start at an ND2 and work their way up. We do have a great article that Andre has actually written over on F-Stop Lounge explaining neutral density filters. So check that out in the comments. I won't go the, into these too much, but an ND8 is basically gonna cut out the light so I can have that on my, my lens and it's gonna cut out either you know, two stops right up to six stops if you wanted, um, or 10 stops on the big stoppers. Um, so it means you can have, rather than sort of a one two fifty of a second, you can go to sort of a second, um, in a second exposure in bright conditions. Um, and that, the effect of that is just the, the sort of the, um, the water running like silk on you know, rocks and things like that. You'll see the, the slow-mo of the waterfalls and things like that. You can do that with this. Um, 
The other filter, not many people would have seen this or come across them. Um, you need to be careful with uh, wide-angled lenses with this one. Uh, this is a variable neutral density filter. And you can see on the side here, it's got a minimum setting and it's got a maximum setting. Um, this one here is actually an Inca. Inca. Um, it's Inca Pro and it's a variable ND 77 mil. Um, with this one, all you need to do is leave it on the, the camera. And again, it's got two rings. You can see here, I'm not sure if you can see that, but as I turn, it's gonna become darker. So this one um, ranges from ND2 right up to ND8, all in the one filter. I don't have to constantly change um, my lenses around. The other thing, well, my filters around, sorry. The other thing this is great for is video. So you can actually record video, and if you go into the shade, you can then open that up a little bit. Whereas if you go into the sun, you can then you know, close it down a bit to let a little bit of less light into the lens. So this, this sort of filter system is what I typically have in my kit at one time. Um, now, I do have another system here which uh, a lot of professionals will use. There's various brands out there. I know Alaya and Colby Brown have some fantastic um, filters that they've got their hands on. Um, so check those ones out. I'll put links in the description below. But personally, I use Lee filters. And you can see here there's a, a varied gradient of neutral density that these ones offer for landscapes. So if you imagine you're, you're shooting a landscape, it's um, the foreground's correctly exposed, but the sky's just really bright and it's overexposing compared to the land. So what do you do? Well, you use one of these filters. Um, it's a gradient, so it means that when your sky is perfectly exposed, you can then stop down the, the sky, which is going to even out the exposure. You can see here, this one here is actually a hard graduated filter. You can get ones which are soft, so the, the gradient is um, uh, less noticeable. Um, I typically line that up with the horizon and I'll do some alteration in Photoshop later on. I just prefer the hard ones myself. Um, and the way they go onto your lens, obviously it's a square onto a round, it's not gonna work. Um, use a adapter. Um, I've got a step up ring, so I would use that on this, but this is the adapter that you'd use. And essentially this is the holder. And this screws onto the front of the lens, okay? And then all you do is you match up these two tabs down the bottom and pull this one out and it just sits onto your lens. So it makes it very easy. And then all you do is you slide in your filter like so, okay? And then you can adjust your filter on the lens up and down. And you can also rotate as well to get the desired effect that you want. Um, if that's not enough light that you're cutting out, the great thing is with the leaf filter system, you can actually stack them. So I could then stack them like that, which is going to increase the, or decrease the amount of light coming into the lens because I've used two filters. Um, and you simply adjust it. And if you want a neutral density filter um, or a strong one like the ND8, you can just use them and cover the whole lens like that in itself. So I hope that gives you some insight into filters. Um, I know when I was starting photography, it was one of those things that's quite hard to understand. What filter does what? Why do I need this? But I can assure you, as soon as you get your first filter, you'll see the difference, especially if you're using a circular polarizing filter. It's a visible difference. Um, and I encourage you to get out there and take some better photos.